We talked about it in there. And this is hard for us. And this isn't something you can work up. And I'm not saying we go outside and pray so that we can suffer. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, sometimes we don't think about this stuff. But when was Jesus suffering the most while on this earth? On the cross. When was Jesus the closest to real life on this earth? On the cross. You see, sometimes when we're in the midst of feeling pressed in upon by this world, we can get distracted and we can think that we're the farthest away from life that we could ever be. That somehow we find ourselves distanced and completely away from the life of God. When in actuality, we may be more close to the life of God than we've ever been, ever, on this earth. You see, and just that kind of a thought can bring peace. You can realize, no, no, no. All that's happening is this world is pressing in on me. And I have a word of the life of God and the power of the life of God dwelling in me. Because I saw when the world pressed in on that word of life that was contained in Jesus, I saw that the world bowed down to that word of life. It wasn't that the word of life bowed down to the world. And now what happens is is the word of that eternal life that's indestructible, that's incorruptible, that word can begin dwelling in me and persuading my heart and persuading my mind that the life that's in the world is subject to the life that's in me. And I can realize that no matter how much that life in the world tries to press against me, it can never conquer the life that's in me. Mm -hmm. What will happen in that instance is I'll begin in my heart dying to the life that's in the world. I'll find something happening in my heart that happened in Christ as he hung on the cross. It says he laid down his life. You see, I'll find my heart in that moment starting to lay down the life that's in the world. And I'll find the spirit of the son in me strengthening me to lay down the life that's in the world. And I'll find the spirit of the son that's in me confessing, Father, my life is contained in you. Can the Father die? Can the Father be corrupted by the world? Then neither can you. (laughs) And you'll you'll begin to find your life strengthened with that. You'll begin to think that when the world presses in on you, it isn't that the world's conquering you. It's that the life in you is conquering the world and it's causing you to lay down the life that's in the world. And that is actually the place where you find real life. It's actually the place where you begin to see resurrection life manifesting in you. Glory to God. Amen. We've had this wrong kind of thought in the church where we think that if we feel pressed in upon, that's the indication something's not as it ought to be. <laughs> uh, man, the more I learn about God, the more I feel peace when I feel pressed in upon. Mm-hmm. And I find in that place, the more I feel peace when I feel pressed in upon, the more I begin to fellowship with him instead of fellowshipping with what's pressing in on me. And then what happens is in that place, I find myself dying to the very thing that's pressing in on me in my heart. I find my heart dying to that thing. And then I find my heart being made alive to the incorruptible life that's dwelling in Christ where the substance of my life is contained. And then I find that incorruptible life starting to animate my thoughts, my feelings, and the things that I do. Glory to God. Now listen, guys, you can't hear what I just said and say, well, that sounds like the right way. Let me go work it out. (laughs) Do, Do you see what I'm saying? I didn't just give you a formula and say, that's what you should be doing. I'll go do it. I'm speaking a truth so your heart can hear that truth and be filled with hope about what's actively happening. Instead of being filled with despair, should you find the world coming at you. Glory to God. 